Let's bring in Marley Hogan now. Marley, what more do we know about the gunman? Max, good evening. While the investigation so far indicates that the shooter acted alone, the FBI is looking at the possibility of co-conspirators. The big missing piece here is motive. Authorities are still searching for any kind of ideology or influence. And now that those who knew the shooter are starting to come forward with their stories, we are beginning to get a bit of an insight into the shooter's state of mind. The man who pulled the trigger, Thomas Matthew Crooks. <laughs> The would-be assassin was armed with a semi-automatic rifle, America's most popular weapon used in some of the deadliest mass shootings. It was legally purchased by his dad. The FBI used it to trace, then identify the 20-year-old. The shooter may be deceased, but the investigation is very much ongoing moving to a small Pittsburgh suburb where he lived. Suspicious devices, potentially explosive materials, were found in his car and home. Crooks had no criminal record, no signs of mental illness. He was a registered Republican, but donated $15 to a Democratic-aligned group. His former classmates described him as smart and polite. Others? I mean, he would sit alone at lunch. I mean, he was just an outcast, and you know how kids are nowadays, so... They're going to see someone like that and they're going to target him because they think it's funny or whatever. The FBI digging through his phone and online life, piecing together the final moments that led to this. He's on top of the roof. Don't go over there. He's on the roof, buddy. Using aerials from the aftermath of the shooting, we know Donald Trump took to the stage here, facing a crowd around 6pm local time. Crooks, having been spotted by several members of the public, was here, on the roof of a neighbouring property about 130 metres away. At 6.11pm, just a few minutes into his campaign speech, loud popping sounds were heard in the crowd and Trump ducked. Within seconds, a Secret Service counter-sniper poised on a roof behind the presidential candidate returned fire and Crooks was dead. But central to the investigation, the catastrophic failing of the Secret Service, Crooks was seen by spectators crawling into his sniper position before he opened fire. Yeah, someone's on top of the roof. Look. There he is right there. Right there, see him? He's laying down, see him? A local police officer reportedly climbed a ladder to confront him, but retreated when Crooks pointed the rifle at him. And still, he was able to fire on the former president before his security detail did anything. One spectator, 50-year-old Corey Comparatore, paid with his life. He used his body to shield his wife and daughters. Corey died a hero. Corey was a girl dad. Corey was a firefighter. Corey went to church every Sunday. Two others who were wounded are now stable. Political disagreements can never, ever be addressed through violence. This would have been the first election Crooks could legally vote in, but what drove the 20-year-old to try and murder a former president is still anyone's guess. In the United States, Miley Hogan, 7 News. And we'll have the latest on the US election race from Washington, D.C. with Ashley Mullaney later in the bulletin as Donald Trump firms as the bookie's strong favourite to retake the White House. Is the election already over?